Hi everyone, thank you for joining this presentation. This presentation is on secure computation from one-way noisy communication. Our main construction suggests a rather interesting way of realizing anti-correlation between a pair of events using anti-concentration inherent to binomial distribution. This is a joint work with Shweta Agrawal, Yuval Shai, A.L. Kushilevich, Manoj Prabhakaran, Vinod Prabhakaran, and Alan Rosen. My name is Varun Narayanan. First, let me quickly describe a channel. A channel is a mathematical model of a noisy memoryless communication link. It has a finite set of input and output symbols and a single use of the channel can be described as follows. When the input is X, the channel outputs a symbol Y with probability P of Y given X. Binary erasure channel and binary symmetric channel are two channels that are studied extensively in cryptography and information theory. A binary erasure channel or BEC for short takes a single bit as input and erases it with probability say P and otherwise lets it pass unchanged. A binary symmetric channel or BSC for short takes a bit and flips it with some probability say P and lets it pass unchanged otherwise. These channels approximate several natural processes and they are the main channels of interest in our study. We studied the secure computing capabilities of these channels when communication is only in one direction. It is known that when Alice and Bob are talking over a noiseless communication link, with the exception of a small class of functions, secure computation of most functions is impossible against computationally unbounded semi-honest adversaries. However, when they additionally use a noisy channel as a resource, they can indeed compute any function with statistical security against even a computationally un unbounded malicious adversary. This is, this is to say that any channel with a non-trivial noise profile is complete for secure computation. In this work, we look at a constrained version of this model where there is no interaction. That is, the communication is restricted to be one directional along the provided noisy channel. This model is called one-way secure computation or OWSC for short. And it was introduced by Gerg et al. in their 2015 paper. Due to the one directionality, we can only expect to compute sender receiver functionalities, which are functionalities that take an input A from the sender and provides an output F of A to the receiver. Further, in the semi honest setting, this problem is interesting only if F is randomized, because otherwise, that is, if F is deterministic, it is secure for the sender to simply compute F of A and send it over to the receiver. Going forward, our focus would be mostly on OWC in the semi honest setting. A randomized sender receiver functionality can itself be thought of as a channel. And then OWC can be thought of as a way of securely implementing a desired channel using the channel at hand. Because of its simple structure, the protocol for one-way secure computation is uh, simple. The sender encodes uh, the input, say, A, using an encoder N and sends it to the receiver, possibly making multiple uses of the channel. The receiver decodes the output of the channel using a decoder deck to compute the potential output. Correctness of the protocol requires that the receiver's output is distributed according to the distribution F of A. Security against the receiver requires that the receiver only learns F of A. This specifically means that the sender cannot simply send her input A to the receiver using an error correcting code, for example. The security against the sender requires that the sender only learns that the receiver's output is distributed according to F of A. Hence, specifically, the sender cannot simply sample F of A by herself and send it to the receiver using an error correcting code. Formally, in the semi honest setting, we need the joint distribution of, of the sender's encoding and the receiver's output to be epsilon close to the joint distribution of the sender's encoding and the output of the functionality in total variation distance. This is the condition for the correctness of the protocol and for the security against semi honest sender with epsilon error. 
Security against the receiver requires that the channel's output can be simulated using only receiver's output, that is F of A. In the malicious setting, the condition for security against the receiver remains the same as they are inert in the protocol. However, the security against the malicious sender requires that the receiver's output is consistent with a valid input to the functionality, even if the sender is sending an illegitimate uh, encoding over the channel. Now on by default, we will be discussing security against semi-honest adversaries. Intuitively, in this model, the secure computation is necessarily carried out by the channel. The encoding and decoding are done to facilitate such a secure computation by the channel. This makes the model interesting from a theoretical point of view, as it investigates the secure computing capabilities of an, of an NYC channel. Many cryptographic tasks can be modeled as sender-receiver functionalities. OWC model is non-interactive and does not use any setup. As a result, the parties can even, parties are not even required to be present at the same time to carry out an OWC protocol. These, these observations make the model appealing from a practical point of view. Notable applications of OWC include generating random puzzles without giving any party an unfair advantage in solving them and realizing randomized blind signatures, which have applications in eCache and non-interactive PKI generation. Zero knowledge proofs in the OWC model are truly non-interactive and do not require a trusted common randomness setup. This is another application of the OWC model. Let us briefly look at what is known about OWC. The previous works address the question of existence of channels that are complete in the OWC model. A channel is said to be complete if it can be used to compute any functionality in the OWC model. Garg et al. in their 2015 paper showed that the infinite family of string random oblivious transfer channels or string ROT for short is complete for OWC with negligible error against malicious computationally unbounded adversaries. Here, by negligible error, we mean that the security and correctness error is a negligible function of the number of users of the channel. Random oblivious transfer functionality or ROT is uh, the sender receiver version of the oblivious transfer functionality. A string ROT channel takes a pair of strings as input and erases exactly one of the strings uniformly at random. A later work showed that no finite channel is complete for OWC with negligible error. This is true even against any, uh, even against computationally bounded semi-honest adversaries. However, a finite channel, specifically the bit ROT channel, is complete against malicious computationally unbounded adversaries if we are ready to settle for an inverse polynomial error. An important question that was left open by the previous works is the question of whether natural channels like BEC and BSC are OWC complete. In our work, we address this question and answer it in, the, in positive. Our main theorem states that BEC and BSC are complete with inverse polynomial error against a computationally unbounded semi-honest sender and a query bounded but otherwise computationally unbounded receiver using an ideal obfuscation. We will describe OWSC using ideal obfuscation in detail in the coming slide. In short, the sender additionally communicates a black box implementation of a function to the receiver in the setting, and the receiver can now query uh, this obfuscation with inputs. To put our uh, result in context. Previous results imply that we cannot demand completeness with negligible error against computationally bounded semi-honest adversaries. Furthermore, against computationally unbounded semi-honest adversaries, specifically in the case of BEC and BSE, it is known that certain functionalities cannot be computed with arbitrarily small error, uh, even by making arbitrarily many uses of the channel. This, note that this impossibility only applies to 
perfectly correct protocols with abort that is the kind of protocols in which the receiver is always aware when it is making an error it's please note that the protocol that we come up with actually satisfies this condition the owc of a given function f using bc or bsc is realized in three steps in our construction first we realize a string erasure channel or scc for short using bc and bsc channels as the name suggests a string erasure channel or scc takes a string as input and erases it with probability half next we use the scc to realize a string rot channel of appropriate input size finally since rot string rot is complete as we already saw we use it to realize f the challenging part is the second step the first step can be realized along the same lines as in the second step and the third step is already known we focus now on the second step that of realizing string rot using scc as we observed it is impossible to realize string rot over scc with small security error using perfectly correct protocols with abort at the core of this impossibility is the difficulty in realizing the anti correlation that is inherent to rot channel using the erasure channel at hand when the rot channel reveals the first string it erases the second string and vice versa this kind of an anti constant that this kind of an anti correlation is not inherent in scc let us now briefly look at the proof of this impossibility to see where the difficulty lies in making a construction consider a owc protocol for rot over scc for any typical encoding of input a0 comma a1 to the rot uh, to ensure security against the sender we need that half of the erasure pattern should decode a0 and so let's call this set of erasure patterns s sub 0 and half of the erasure patterns should decode a1 at the receiver let's call this set s1 since the protocol is uh, perfectly secure with abort we require s0 and s1 to be monotone sets but then classic results show that s1 intersection intersection s0 is of a substantial volume that is of volume about 1 by 4 hence the receiver can decode both the messages with substantial probability this makes the scheme insecure against a receiver a malicious uh, i mean a corrupt receiver semi honest corrupt receiver note that this does not give rise to a constructive strategy for the receiver to obtain both messages what would a constructive attack by the receiver look like in an owc protocol the sender encodes the input a0 comma a1 and sends it over the scc the receiver takes the erased version output by the scc and runs the decoder on it suppose it decodes a0 the decoder can now try to decode a1 by calling the decoder after guessing some of the erased symbol or after further deleting some of the received symbols we essentially build an owc scheme that is robust to such an attack from the receiver and simultaneously is secure against the sender we do this by creating a kind of computational anti correlation by exploiting the anti concentration of the binomial distribution let me describe the model of owc using ideal obfuscation here in addition to sending the encoding of the input over the channel the sender also sends an ideal obfuscation of a function f of its choice <clears throat> by ideal obfuscation we mean that the receiver only has oracle access to this uh, function f this can be realized in the real world by having the sender ship a stateless tamper proof hardware of the function f now the decoder decoding function deck has oracle access to this uh, function f observe that using ideal obfuscation does not make the problem trivial the first scheme that might suggest itself is to not send any encoding at all and send f which on queried with zero outputs a0 and outputs 
uh, and when queried with one outputs a1 this of course is insecure as the receiver can obviously make both these queries to obtain a0 and a1 thus breaking the security let me now give an outline of our OWC protocol for ROT over SCC. On input A0, A1, the sender sends in randomly chosen symbols X1 to Xn over the SCC. It then constructs a function F sub S, X parameterized by X, S, where S is a randomly chosen secret test, secret test set of size square root n. It then sends the ideal obfuscation of this function f sub s comma x. So let's first try an f sub s comma x that works as follows. When, uh, <coughs> when called with an input y, f sub s comma x first checks if y is consistent with x. That is whether all the unerased positions in y coincides with x if not it aborts otherwise it checks if a majority of the indices in the secret set s is erased if that is the case it reveals a sub 0 and otherwise it reveals a sub 1 suppose a majority of the indices in s is erased in the received string in this case the receiver can decode a sub 0 the only way for it to obtain a sub 1 in this case is to un unerase sufficiently many erased indices in S so that uh, there is a majority of unerased symbols in S. And then using such a string to query F sub X to get the uh, other input A sub 1. But it is impossible for a query bounded receiver to correctly guess a uniformly random string of large length. This makes it impossible for the receiver to obtain the other input in this case. However, when the receiver receives a string in which a majority of the positions in S are unerased, it, it can decode A1, but it can also try to decode A0 as follows. All it needs to do is get a majority of the indices in S erased. But this is easy to do. Although the receiver does not know the location of the secret set S, it can erase a large number of indices arbitrarily, hoping to get a majority of the indices in S erased. And this is a valid attack. To protect against this attack, we add an extra condition to F sub S comma X to obtain our final scheme. The, the function now aborts also when the number of erasures is more than N by two plus N to the two by three. Why does this work? First of all, this does not affect the correctness of the scheme because the SCC does not cause more than n by 2 plus n to the 2 by 3 erasures, except with negligible probability. This follows from a simple turn off bound. This tweak protects against the forgetting attack uh, mounted by the receiver that we just talked about. The crucial observation is that by an anti-concentration bound on the binomial distribution, when a majority of indices in S is unerased, with all but an inverse polynomial probability, it is a substantially large majority, say of the order n to the one by eight. But a receiver who is unaware of the whereabouts of the secret set S will not be able to uh, erase a majority of the positions in S uh, with this new constraint in place. That is with all but negligible probability under the budget constraint of n by two plus n to the n by three erasures, the receiver will fail to erase the surplus n to the one by eight symbols in S. Hence this attack fails, making the scheme uh, secure with inverse polynomial security error. SEC can be realized over BSC or BEC using similar construction as we mentioned in the beginning. And the functionality F can be realized using the string ROT that we just now realized. This concludes the proof of our theorem. As we observed before, a direct way to implement ideal obfuscation is by shipping a stateless tamper-proof hardware to the receiver. To get a plain model instantiation, a natural approach is to use indistinguishability obfuscation instead of the ideal obfuscation. Since IO is the best possible obfuscation, as shown by the work of Goldwasser and Rothblum, if 
some instantiation of ideal obfuscation in our protocol uh, is secure, then so is IO. We, however, are not able to show that our protocol remains secure under, uh, I mean, when ideal obfuscation is replaced with indistinguishability obfuscation. This leads us to the following highly plausible conjecture. Replacing <coughs> ideal obfuscation with IO, with any IO scheme in our protocol results in an OWSE protocol over BSC or BEC in the plain model with inverse polynomial error against computationally bounded semi-honest adversaries. It turns out that in the plain model, assuming the conjecture, we can actually obtain security against malicious adversaries also. However, using ideal obfuscation, we could only claim security against semi-honest adversary. To ensure malicious security, we only need to additionally secure the protocol against a malicious sender who attempts to influence the output distribution of the receiver. This is because the receiver being inert has no additional power in the malicious setting. To ensure security against the sender, <clears throat> it is sufficient to ensure that the function that is being obfuscated is a legitimate function. This can be ensured by making the sender provide a non-interactive zero-knowledge proof of this fact. Known results show that NIZK can be realized using the provided channel, that is BSC or BEC. Hence, we can realize malicious security in the plane model, assuming the conjecture. Thus, in the plane model, the natural channels like BEC and BSC are complete with inverse polynomial error against semi-honest and malicious computationally bounded adversaries. In conclusion, we showed that ROT can be realized over BEC and BSE using ideal obfuscation with inverse polynomial security, which further implied that BEC and BSC are complete in the OWC model with inverse polynomial security. We leave two important open problems. The most pertinent one is that of instantiating ideal obfuscation in the plain model. The other one is in the ideal model where we would like to extend our result to malicious adversaries too. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening.